There's a number of aging theories about why, in fact, we do age. Um, some of these are, are kind of, there's hints that each of these may be having some role in the aging process. One of them is a cross-linking theory, do, thinking that there's unwanted cross-links between various molecules that are unable to be resolved, that increase over time and cause dysfunction of cells. Another is related to a genome maintenance theory of aging, where DNA damage is accumulating over time from either things within our food or within intracellular processes that cause errors or other issues within DNA, that then that is unresolvable and you have problems with your genome and that ultimately leads to age. Similar or uh, kind of related idea is a free radical theory of aging where there are reactive oxygen species or other byproducts of metabolism that are actively causing uh, damage to other molecules, be it DNA, proteins, or uh, other uh, effects within the cell. But what I'll focus for my talk on is on the cellular senescence theory of aging. The senescence theory of aging was something that has, is actually in the grand scheme of things a relatively young idea. And about 60 years ago, this person, Leonard Hayflick, uh, in working with Paul Moorhead, was working to identify or really was trying to culture human fibroblasts and had found out that the idea was at that time that human fibroblasts were immortal, that they would grow forever in culture. But what Hayflick found is that over time, there is a spot where after about 50 to 60 population doublings, these fibroblasts then entered into a state that they called senescence, which was now an irreversible growth arrest where they were still living within the culture. As long as you were replenishing it with fresh media, it would stay alive but there was no further division of those cells. This became known as the Hayflick limit. So this is something that is now well accepted within our field, that normal cells have this capacity for division to a particular point, and then they reach this limit and are no longer able to divide. It didn't take long for this to then be uh, conceptualized to think to underlie the aging process within individuals where the thinking is with advancing time, we get to a spot where our cells are no longer able to divide and replenish themselves. And it leads to this idea of increasing organismal age with time. In later studies, it was found that really the, the important regulator of this senescence effect, at least in vitro in fibroblasts in human cells, was the erosion of telomeres. And when telomeres got critically short, cells were unable to divide any longer. So this is kind of the, the molecular understanding for why the Hayflick limit is ultimately reached. The idea that senescence maybe played a role in vivo though, was still very unclear, being as we didn't really have great tools for identifying the presence of senescent cells. Despite her small stature, a giant in the field of cellular senescence research is Judy Campisi, who's based at the Buck Institute in California. Judy has done a variety of studies that have been really instrumental in, in really trying to understand what senescent cell biology is actually doing, both in vitro and in vivo. But this particular study from now 25 years ago in PNAS from Judy's group, talked about the accumulation of a particular phenotype known as senescence-associated beta-galactosidase activity. The idea is, is that this is an enzymatic activity assay that the lysosomes of senescent cells at a particular pH have a particular activity against this particular substrate. And what you find is that when cells are labeled, meaning that they're going through DNA replication, there's very few cells that are beta-gal positive, SA beta-gal positive. But as you have a reduction in the amount of labeling of nuclei, meaning that there is not cell cycle progression taking place or DNA replication, you see an acceleration or an accumulation of SA beta-gal positive cells, where many cells now are becoming beta-gal positive. You can use this same activity assay in vivo and look for the change of cells to develop this color metric assay of becoming blue in tissues when they're becoming senescent. This is from a young individual skin. This is from an old individual skin. And you can see the accumulation of these beta-gal positive cells, both in uh, epidermis and dermis is in this particular study. So we now had a tool where we could at least characterize do senescent cells accumulate with advancing age? And it was found in fact that senescent cells do accumulate with aging and at sites of age-related dysfunction.
So the thinking is, is that when we're young individuals, we may have senescent cells that will, uh, that will show up for a particular purpose, but we think that they have a particular purpose why, they're, why, they, why they are induced in that spot. Maybe it's in response to a particular type of damage. What we think is that as we age or as we develop pathologies, more of these cells will accumulate to a spot where when we are looking in old individuals, we always will see an increased burden of senescent cells relative to a very young individual. This is pretty consistent amongst mammals, um, pretty consistent amongst different laboratories as well. So this led to the idea that maybe these senescent cells, not only are they there, but they may be causal and implicated in driving pathologies with this increasing age.